In this lecture, we are going to be quickly going over how to assign net potentials for half reactions of redox reactions and also come up with this E0 of cell, which is the net voltage of the entire reaction, sometimes called the electromotor force. And this gives us a very good hint or understanding whether a reaction will go under current conditions or not. Spontaneity is a measure of how well a reaction will go in the forward direction or the reverse reaction. So voltages are tied to that, although we're not going to get into those specifics today. In any case, we're going to go to this problem here where I'm asking you, can tin replace iron in iron chloride? We're going to answer this question using net potentials and coming up, and we'll come up with a voltage. So in any case, we're going to start with can tin or, or, or SN, stannum, as we'd say in Latin, replace ferrum or iron in iron 2 chloride. So the reaction is we have solid tin, at least the reaction we think that could happen because we're going to evaluate that through net potentials. So tin plus iron chloride, what should it give us? Well, remember redox reactions give a very classic single replacement reaction. So we're expecting the tin to replace the iron and make tin chloride and then re-kick out the iron. Now, we need to assign some oxidation numbers. That's our first skill. Standalone metals get a zero, so iron is zero. Chlorine's a halogen. It's going to be negative one, needs one more electron to become stable. There's two of them, so negative two overall. And this thing has to be zero because there was no charge written. So iron, because there's one, has to be plus two to make that zero. And that's plus two overall. Okay? Now, the reason why I just did this is to show you, in order for this single replacement to work, Tin has to become tin plus 2. Right now, tin doesn't really uh, attract the chloride ion here because, very simply, tin has no charge. So tin's going to have to lose some electrons, okay, and become charged and has to give them, okay, to the iron. So the flow of electrons would have to be that tin would have to give its electrons, being a metal, metals like to do that, give its electrons to the, to the metal uh, ion, the cation. The metal will become zero. The tin will become plus 2, and when it does so, it'll attract the chloride ion, which is still negative 1. Okay, and if you do the sign the oxidation states, you'll see that the chloride doesn't change here. Therefore, we could say that this uh, is a spectator, not doing much. Now, I wrote it this way, but it could have been written this way. Tin, iron, plus 2, going to tin plus 2 plus iron. Notice I got rid of the um, spectator chloride. And this is called a net iron reaction. So it could have been written this way. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it as such as it's written here. I'm going to try to get rid of this right here. And now I have this reaction left. Okay, so evaluating the charges. Okay, zero is becoming plus two. So my tin, okay, my tin zero is becoming tin plus two. We balance the tin. There's no oxygens, no hydrogens, so we're not going to balance the electrons. And we need two over here for both sides to have the same charge. This negative two and a plus two is zero. This tin is zero. Remember, when we sign oxidation, we sign um, electrons to one side of a half reaction. Both sides of a half reaction have to have the same charge. Conservation of charge here. Okay, we're going to pull out iron. Here it's plus two it's going to go to iron zero. And it's going to have to gain two electrons. Notice there's no oxygens, no hydrogens. There's nothing to balance here other than just the iron. There's one iron, one iron. I put two electrons because negative two, right? Two times negative one. Each electron's negative one. Plus a plus two is zero. That's a zero. Okay. And if you notice, the electrons will cancel. And we get an overall reaction which is already balanced. One tin to one iron, as you can see. By balancing electrons, we would balance the net ion reaction. So our reaction is balanced very simply. Now I'm just going to wipe this out. Okay, so we know what we're doing. And of course, the total reaction is uh, tin zero plus Fe plus two goes to tin plus two plus iron, zero. Okay, great. What am I going to do from here? Well, I want to sign some oxidation states. 
All right, so now that we have our half reactions and our overall reaction balanced because we balanced the electrons, uh, let's look at the question, can tin replace iron? What they're really asking here is, is this spontaneous? Will this work? And the way to answer this is through voltages. What is the E0 of cell? What's the net voltage, the net electromotor force? Remember, voltages are an energy. It's a joule per charge. So it's an energy per charge, meaning we're going to evaluate whether this reaction works by looking at the two players here. We have tin and iron are the two players. Someone's oxidizing, someone's reducing. Okay, so if we look at my reaction, clearly, okay, the one who is reducing, a reduction or reducing means that you are um, accepting electrons. You're helping pull electrons away. So in my reaction, it looks like the iron, I'm sorry, the iron plus two is accepting two electrons for this to work. For this to replace, this is happening. So the iron plus two is reducing. It is also the oxidizer, or some people would say the oxidizing agent, right? It is the iron okay, is forcing tin, maybe, to oxidize by pulling the electrons away, if this, in fact, work. this works. Okay, we don't know. We're going to evaluate that. Now, who is doing the uh, oxidizing? Oxidizing, or I should say oxidation, is the one losing electrons, and that's the tin. Zero. Why? Because the tin zero is losing electrons. And if you forget, remember this, Leo... The lion says, grrr, right? Losing electrons is oxidation. Well, tin is losing electrons. Electrons are on the product side. Gaining electrons is reduction. Electrons are on the reactant side. And, of course, we call oxidation. They're also called reducers or the reducing agent. Careful in your terminology. They help reduction because tin forces electrons on the iron. And now we're back to that standard cell thing. Is tin strong enough in forcing iron to reduce, or is iron strong enough, okay, to force uh, tin to oxidize? I'll say that again. Is tin strong enough to force, I should say, uh, iron plus two to reduce? Sorry if I said that wrong. So is tin strong enough to force iron to reduce, or is iron strong enough as an element or a compound or an ion strong enough to force tin to oxidize. So to evaluate that combination, we look at net potentials. All right, and here is our net potential chart we're going to use. Okay, let's make that bigger. Now, if you look at our chart here, we'll see that the uh, net potential, standard reduction potentials, all based on the standard cell which we talked about. That standard cell is the zero in the middle. And as you can see, the elements that are very good at gaining electrons, okay, I have a positive voltage since this is based on reduction potentials. And the electrons or elements that are not good at gaining electrons have low values. In fact, they eventually become negative, which means lithium plus hates to gain electrons and becomes negative. Now, what does this mean? This means that, well, negative voltage means that doesn't normally occur unless you add that voltage. So lithium doesn't like to gain electrons. So lithium loves to go in this direction, which would mean it's positive volts when it what? Oxidizes. This is a reduction. These are all written as gaining electrons. Grr, gaining electrons. And the reverse is oxidation. So lithium loves to oxidize, go this way. Remember, spontaneity is a direction. So lithium loves to oxidize, which means the opposite doesn't go so well. If you love to go one way, that means the reverse doesn't go very well. So we can evaluate the voltages of the oxidation and reduction on this chart. Let's do so. Let's go to tin oxidizing. Tin is losing electrons. Leo, let's go find that chart. Let's go find tin oxidizing. Now it's going to go the reverse as written here. So I need to find tin by itself and it's oxidizing. It's going in the reverse, so I have to make this positive 0.14. So tin and oxidize. Remember, it's written as a reduction potential, so that's why it's written that way. But going in the reverse, it's positive 0.14. So we would say positive 
So positive 0.14 volts. Okay, let's go find the iron gaining two electrons, which is reduction. And that's iron plus two specifically. You can't get lazy. It's not iron, it's iron plus two. So find iron plus two gaining two electrons. It's going to be as written. And I'll find it right there. Iron plus 2 gaining 2 electrons as written becomes iron. It's negative 0.44. Whoa, it doesn't like to do that too much. Why? Because iron likes to oxidize. But since iron plus 2 in my hair friction is re being reduced, I have to write it as written. So negative 0.44. Okay, so this would be negative 0.44 volts. Now, this is a voltage. A voltage is joules per charge, okay? It is not, okay, based on how many electrons. It's the energy per charge, okay? It has nothing to do with how many electrons. So we're never going to multiply this by two. It's a measure of spontaneity. Will it work or not? It's not a current. If voltage is a current, now current, okay, is coulombs per second, okay? That's how many charge occurs per time. So it's like a rate. We would care about that electron there. But since voltage is a energy per charge, like a, mole, like a mole, like a joule per mole, it's independent on the rate. So we never multiply it by two. So we just take these values and now we're going to add them. In this case, the negative is bigger than the positive. OK, so to evaluate this, we uh, add these together and we get a negative point. 3.0 volts. Wow, what does that mean? Well, if you think about me for think with me for a second, tin, hmm. Okay, oxidizes pretty well, but is not strong enough of a reducer to force iron who doesn't like to reduce. If this was more positive, this was bigger positive than this negative, then tin could have forced iron plus two to get reduced, but it wasn't positive enough. So this wasn't strong enough to force iron to reduce. And therefore, the overall reaction is non-spontaneous. What does that mean? That means the reaction is not going to work in this direction under these current set of conditions. So it doesn't work. So can tin replace iron? And the answer, okay, is no, it cannot. That is our answer because we got negative voltages, which tell us the reaction doesn't go in that direction. In fact, it tells me that the reaction actually goes spontaneously in the reverse. See, negative volts means to make this go in this direction, we'd have to add exactly 0.4, 0 0.30 volts to make it go, okay? So that's how we do this, all right? Hope that helped.